In Activity 10, Shoreline Erosion, students investigate the erosion that occurs along a shoreline as a result of tidal and wave action. Students first simulate the erosive effect of wave action in their stream tables. Then they compare the erosion caused by large and small waves, and finally predict and then observe the effects of a breakwater on shoreline erosion. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 10, 1 liter containers, sand, stream tables, plastic trays, aluminum foil, 15 cm by 15 cm reclosable bags, modeling clay, nylon mesh, and wooden sticks. You will also need to provide assorted sizes of pebbles, scissors, and tap water. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 10 for each student. Collect several cups of assorted size pebbles for students to use in their breakwaters. Place the following items at a distribution station. A roll of aluminum foil, pebbles of assorted sizes, a package of nylon mesh, a pair of scissors, a block of modeling clay, and wooden sticks. Each team of four will need their stream table, a one liter container filled with tap water, approximately six pounds of sand, a piece of modeling clay, and a plastic tray. To begin the activity, ask students, what are some of the factors that cause erosion along a shoreline? Students should reply that the constant forces of waves breaking on the shoreline cause erosion. Then ask, how do waves get their energy? Students may know that energy from the wind blowing across the surface of the water is absorbed by the water and forms waves. As a wave nears the shore, the increasingly shallow depth of the ocean floor forces the energy of the wave upward, steepening the wave until it breaks. Next, ask students, what are some factors that affect the size and strength of waves? The size and strength of waves can be affected by the speed and direction of the wind, whether it is high or low tide when the waves reach shore, how long the wind blows, and the distance of open water the wind blows across. Explain that tidal action is the regular rise and fall of the surface level of the oceans. Although the majority of shoreline erosion is a result of the waves breaking on the beach, tidal action causes the breaking point of the waves along the shoreline to change, thereby increasing the total area of the shoreline subject to wave pounding. Inform students that in this activity, they will construct a shoreline in their stream tables to observe the erosion caused by waves. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 10 to each student. Each team of four will need their stream table, a one liter container filled with tap water, approximately six pounds of sand, a piece of modeling clay, and a plastic tray. Instruct teams to plug the hole in their stream table with a piece of clay, and then add the sand to the other end of the stream table. Remind them to use their hands to smooth and gently slope the sand so that it covers two-thirds of the stream table. Unlike in previous experiments, the stream tables will not be elevated at one end during this experiment. Instruct the students to pour enough water into the empty end of their stream tables so that the water reaches the sand. Have them dip one end of the plastic tray into the water in their stream table and move it slightly back and forth to create small waves. Tell students to record their observations on Activity Sheet 10 and then smooth the sand back to its original condition. Next, have them repeat the wave action, this time increasing the size of the waves, and then answer questions 2 and 3 on the activity sheet. Ask students, how did the erosion caused by large waves differ from that caused by small waves? Students should have observed that large waves cause more erosion because they have more volume and more force than small waves. Then ask, what can we do to reduce the amount of shoreline erosion caused by waves? If possible, show photographs of different types of breakwaters. Explain that breakwaters are artificial barriers positioned offshore to deflect or reduce the energy of the waves as they approach the shoreline. In doing so, they limit shoreline erosion. Next, turn the student's attention to the materials that are available at the distribution station. Modeling clay, pebbles, wooden sticks, aluminum foil, and nylon mesh. Challenge them to design a breakwater using any of these materials. Have them predict the effectiveness of their breakwaters and record their predictions on Activity Sheet 10. Once they have finished building their breakwaters, instruct teams to perform the wave action experiment again and record their observations. After everyone has finished experimenting and recording, have teams share their designs on the board and explain why they were or were not successful. Ask students, what are some of the drawbacks of the materials used in your breakwater construction? Accept answers such as wood rots, rocks and other earth materials erode, metal rusts, and nylon mesh can ensnare living organisms. Finally, ask students, from what you have observed, is there any way to completely stop shoreline erosion caused by waves? 
students should realize that it's nearly impossible to completely stop shoreline erosion because the strength and magnitude of the water is too great. To conclude the activity, tell students to carefully tip and drain the water from their stream tables into the one liter containers, then discard the water. Tell them to leave the sand, grid, and clay-filled grommet plug in each table and to stack them for use in activity 11. Have the students dismantle the breakwaters. The clay should be lumped together and placed in the reclosable bag. Rinse and air dry the other materials and return them to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.